Welcome everybody to our um, seminar this evening on um, bath remodeling. We have Lynn Munson from um, Dream Maker Bath and Kitchen. He's mm -hmm. going to be our uh, prize speaker here tonight and he's going to have a lot of great information for everybody. The City of Bloomington has a Housing and Redevelopment Authority. That's where I work and we offer um, rehabilitation loans to homeowners in the City of Bloomington and those are free, um, not, I should say, they're inter they are deferred loans, which means that they are no, there are no payments on those loans um, while you live in the house. It does charge 4% interest on those loans, but they are available to income qualified people throughout the city. So I encourage you to uh, um, take a look at the information. There's a, there's a postcard that advertises those at the front entry. Also, if you go to the city's website, bloomingtonmm.gov, search for rehab loans, you can find out more information. So Lynn's gonna be here for about, uh, about an hour tonight. About an hour, yep. Mm -hmm. uh, plenty of time for questions. So thank you all for coming out. Thank you, Brian. Well, thank you very much for coming out, everybody, uh, especially in the rain, so that was very nice. Uh, what we'd like to do here is, this is not any super formal situation. If as I'm going through here, what we're going to talk about is uh, bathroom modeling from very simple innovations, which are very simple or more cosmetic kinds of things you can do to, to fix up your bathroom very inexpensively, to progressively more and more intricate and detailed and uh, a large, larger and larger remodels. So you're going to see a progression of these kinds of projects all the way through this presentation. I'm going to show you a lot of before and after photos. And we're going to talk a lot about different ideas and products and reasons why certain things were, going to do were done. We're going to also talk about accessible design as well. And so as we're going through this, if you have a question about something, just holler out and uh, we'll address it right there. Otherwise, I've got about 45 minutes of a presentation here and I'll also try to leave time then at the end for more questions. So it's uh, uh, pretty informal that way. Just holler out, okay? So we're going to talk about some of the trends in bath remodeling. Is the bath is the last private sanctuary where you can escape and totally pamper yourself. Trends to larger baths, especially master bath with separate his and her spaces. There's a trend towards separate newer whirlpool tubs and great shower systems. And lots of creature comforts such as in-floor heat, TVs, bidets, anti-fog mirrors, coffee bars in your bathroom. We can pamper you to death if you like. So we're going to look at some simple innovations. We're going to look at some cost-effective ways to change your bath without breaking the bank. We're going to use the simple use of color and how it can change the character of the room. We're going to talk about how you bring architectural elements from the rest of your home in to, uh, carry, uh, to marry your bathroom to the rest of your house. Uh, new materials in acrylic, solid surface, quartz, stone panels, or things where we can overlay over existing tile instead of having to tear everything out. There's lots of opportunities there, and I'm going to be showing you some of those uh, prod products. And then just simple makeovers like cabinet refacing can uh, dramatically change the space. And then we're going to go to more progressive total transformations, more extensive bathroom modeling options featuring new ways to pamper yourself, such as his and her separate vanity spaces, separate tub and shower areas, more private water closet rooms, the evolution of the shower to include multiple spray systems, steam units, and heating, and seating, excuse me. Evolution of the whirlpool to include air jets, aromatherapy, chromotherapy, infrared, and sonic wave technology. And evolution of the water closet and the bidet. And then we're also going to talk about aging in place and green design. So what can we do to allow you to live in as long as you want in your home with dignity? We're going to apply universal design principles for all occupants and install aging in place projects, products to assist everyone who lives in the home. So how can we, uh, and how can we apply uh, green design principles and products to be kind to the environment and provide long-term return on investment? Thank you. So, if this is your bathroom, and you have creatively cut the door around the toilet so you can get in the room, help is on the way, okay? That was the coolest sh uh, picture. When I walked in and I saw that, I go, now that's, that's creative. So I'm an interior designer by training and a kitchen and bath specialist, but that, okay. We're gonna talk about very simple things. 
This is not a bad looking bathroom. The, it's a really beautiful tile uh, on the floor in the marble. Uh, the vanity is just pretty basic. It's kind of sterile. And how can we just add a little bit of, of uh, pizzazz to this bathroom? Well, these are some of the cosmetic things we're going to be talking about. So one idea is this is what you could do with it. You notice in that mirror on the top, there's a picture reflected in that mirror that was hanging in that bathroom. And that was a, a, a piece of art that was important to them. And notice the color scheme that's in there, lots of reds. So the idea of pulling the red out and just painting the vanity into a bright red like that and putting a new countertop in it totally transforms the character of that room. This sets that idea of bringing architectural elements or personal items to personalize the space to make it your own. But you don't have to spend a ton of money. The rest of the bathroom, that's all we did was just the vanity, painted it, and put a new top and new sink in it. The other reason why we did the vessel bowl sink is you'll notice that that uh, vanity before was the old style 30 inch high vanity. Vessel bowls are a really good solution if you want to retrofit and raise the height up. So now that gets you closer to the sink and it has a nice aesthetic to it. This was a turn of the century home on Summit Avenue in St. Paul. Um, and uh, it had the old uh, mosaic tile on the floor. But it had gone through a pretty bad remodel in the 70s and it sure looked like it. And yet the rest of the home was this absolutely gorgeous turn of the century mansion. So how do you take a room like this and kind of bring it back into the character of the home? So one way is you'll see that tile floor. That's the original tile floor. We just cleaned it all up and re redid the grout on it. And there was this beautiful marble pattern all the way in other areas of the house. So we just brought tile, uh, marble tiles in and created that pattern that we had seen in other areas of the home and carried that through. And instead of doing some kind of a blind or a window treatment, Minneapolis St. Paul is home to some of the best glass houses in the country as far as glass artisans. And so that's just uh, an etched mirror done and frosted with it. So it's a way to create a panel and it's overlaid right over the glass so it gives you total privacy but yet lets light in and creates a bit of an art effect. And those are very simple, not terribly expensive things to do. And then the, the pedestal sink was salvaged from a salvage yard and just reglazed and we thought this looked much more in character with it, what the original home would have been. Yes? Are you going to talk about how you cleaned up the Pardon? Are you going to talk about how you cleaned up the Oh, she asked how we cleaned up the tile. Yeah, it's a mosaic tile. Uh, those, and these older mosaic tiles, they're actually fairly easy. You can use, there's different types of tile cleaners that will clean it. It can be as the worst case scenarios, you can use almost like a muriatic acid on it and clean it that way but generally it doesn't take quite that much work. There are different, if you can go to any good tile shop, they'll have different types of cleaners that will get down and, and grind that out. So, but that's all we did, we just cleaned it up. And then this was actually a new home. This was done for the, the TV show Home Time. It was one of their new homes. But this idea of, of adding color and character to the space, you'll see that- Can you spill the acid? Pardon? Can you spill the acid? What? what kind of uh, muratic? Oh, muratic. M-U-R-A-T-I-C. Muratic. T-I-C. Muratic. Okay. This is just this nice little alcove where the tub is. But the idea here is this was uh, fronting onto a lake area. So you can pull the, the blue of the water in in a really simple little mosaic tile and create almost a little simple alcove like that. That's how you can use color or texture or pattern just to create interesting little niches in a home. This was a typical little tiny powder room. It was kind of uh, done in the 70s, it kind of looks like, with some pretty ugly wallpaper now. At the time, that was the bee's knees, that wallpaper, I'll tell you, because I was still selling it back then. <laughs> so I'm still around long enough now I get to tear all that stuff out and do it over again. It's kind of fun. So. But they came to me and they said, you know, we really want this to be like a Tuscan look. So this is about as far away from that as you can. But you can do that very simply by just changing the tile pattern around. The vanity is actually a, a wall base cabinet, a stock wall base cabinet that you could pick it up at any lumber yard or any uh, home center. And uh, by doing that, it's only 12 inches deep. 
And one of the tricks there is, is about making small spaces bigger is trying to play with the floor space. So by making that a wall cabinet, it's only 12 inches deep, it opens up the space and makes the room feel much bigger. And then adding the vessel bowl on top gives it a little bit more of a look, but also more practical because you can get right up close to the sink then and not uh, uh, slop water all over. So. Yeah, pardon? Not really, because if you go back, the question was it's less storage, but let's look at it. If you go back, this is a full depth vanity, but I will guarantee you if you open up those two doors that's in there, there's no drawers in there, it's just a big open cabinet and it's really junky. The thing about it is, is if you go to a 12 inch deep cabinet like this, it's still kind of junky, but it's all right there in front of you. It's only 12 inches deep, so everything's right in front. So you don't, it doesn't get lost behind it. So I don't know that you actually, not much. It's just the plumbing, just the, the trap. Yeah, you'd have some, you know, it's not perfect. In remodeling, you have to make compromises sometimes. And that's what you're seeing here. Most of these are going to be remodels. So this is a very standard five by nine bathroom, you walk in with the oak vanity, a vinyl floor, kind of nondescript. It, it's, not, it's fine, but how can we make that more interesting and also more like the owner of the company, of the home, excuse me. Well, it's this idea, again, you see those three pieces of art hanging on the wall, though? They were, hang, they were hanging in the hallway outside the bathroom. She, they, these were important to her. So we brought them in there and we pulled the colors out of there and found that nice red light fixture. And this floor is a, it's a red floor. It's not for everybody, but it's a new version of the old linoleum. It's called uh, mar uh, Marmoleum by Forbo. It's an all natural product made out of linseed oil and flax. It's extremely strong wearing. It's rated for commercial wear. And the beauty of that in bathrooms especially is, you know, if you see sheet vinyl floors, they have a very high kind of a plastic look to them, a very high shine and they tend to look a little bit plastic. This is a, a very matte finish, an all natural look, and just an overall marbleized pattern. So it really creates a background, but you can do it in colors. This comes in 180 different colors, and it's not any more expensive than most sheet vinyls. Yes, sir? Can you spell marmoleum? Marmoleum, M-A-R-M-O-L-E-U-M. -E yeah, from Forbo it's a, is the manufacturer. This has been in Europe for many, many years. Uh, it's, it's now, it's been in the States for quite a while, but it just hasn't gotten the widespread use that it has over in Europe. But it's a terrific product and it cleans, the beauty of it is the, the marbleized pattern hides everything and it cleans up like a dream, so. Yeah, you can get linoleum still, yes. Very, very expensive. This is not. And then the cabinets here, again, are stock cabinets. It's just, a, you're just taking wall cabinets and different uh, shapes and sizes of cabinets and putting them together in interesting ways. There's no rule that says they all have to be one size. So just a different way of doing it. We do a lot of work in condominiums too. So and quite often I walk in and I find this. It, could it be any more sterile looking? It's white on white on white on white. And, is there any visual interest to this bathroom whatsoever? So the client says to me, well, let's at least try and do something to warm it up without spending a lot of money. Okay, so let's see what we can do there. So we just, we uh, replaced the vanity with a darker vanity, added a, a granite top, but then you can take the same mirror and just put a wood frame around the existing mirror that matches the vanity. Very simple to do, not terribly expensive. They had a piece of art, we brought it in, painted the wall, and then my client provided the furry toilet cover. This home was done in the 70s. It was out in a, a wooded area, so they were trying to bring that wooded motif in by the painting. Nicely done painting work for the time, but look at the tile work. At the time, that was great tile work, but now see how busy that is? The idea here is when you, when you take a, a tile like that, and uh, if, you, if it's small mosaic tile, one of the kind of design tricks is the smaller the tile in a bathroom, the busier it looks and the more uh, crowded the room feels. So if you want a room to look large, a small room like a bathroom to look larger, go to larger format tile in big spaces so the room looks bigger. So just by changing the tile here, you can also get rid of the busyness, which is visually 
uh, disruptive. And so we wanted to create a bit of a furniture look to this too. So this is a way you can do that. Again, three standard stock cabinets just screwed together and we, you can buy these metal legs at a cabinet uh, supply shop and put the, the legs on it and it makes it look like a piece of furniture that you've brought in and maybe passed on in your family. And then uh, the, you can see now how that larger tile on the floor, doesn't that room feel bigger? And then the vessel bowl is just a way to, to uh, raise the height. And then the mirror is just something we found on, on uh, the internet with that kind of interesting stick pattern around it to kind of bring the outside in. Lots of old mud bed set tile and very busy, you had the old radiator in here. We're gonna keep the radiator, but how do we make the radiator hopefully kind of disappear and give this a, a, a quick update and kind of clean it up? Well, this is one way to do that. You see the grate over the radiator helps hide that. And again, it's very simple white tile. Everything is white on white on white except for the glass tile insets. So that's another way you can just do simple little insets of color and that way you probably won't get tired of it as easily over a long period of time. So, what do you think? 1950s, early 60s maybe? Very typical. These uh, tiles are set in what we call mud bed, meaning there's about three quarters of an inch of cement behind it. It's, they're, they're in there to stay. They're, and there's usually nothing wrong with them other than you've just gotten tired of the look of it. They don't really necessarily wear out too much if you don't make, unless you don't maintain the grout. But if you maintain the grout, these will last 100 more years. But the thing of it is, you know, it's how do you change it? Well, one way to do this is you can take a tile like this and you can have it reglazed where they come in and etch it and spray it. And that will, that will work and that will last 10 to 15 years if you don't use anything abrasive on it. And that's a good solution. You can also, instead of tearing it out completely, you can go right over it with other panel materials that we're gonna look at a little bit later. Or you can tear it out completely and start all over. But when you do go to tear these kinds of bathrooms out, you're gonna end up going down to the studs and starting completely over. So those are different levels of remodeling that you can do. So here we tore it out and we just replaced it with that same white tile that you saw on the other side of the room. But adding the little glass mosaic in there gives the room a bit of interest, but yet the room is still white and it keeps it as big and open looking as possible. And I think very much more classic. It won't age or look trendy in, in years time. How many have carpet still in their bathroom? So, and you've got the tub with the window in it. And when these were done, you know, we didn't have showers then. So that was okay to put the tub there, but now since these were built, now you've added showers into these areas and the window being in the shower area is always a problem of water getting into your walls. And how do we update this? So this is a little more extensive, but I, and this is the other side of that with the uh, cultured marble and the tile and the wallpaper. One way to do this is um, here we put uh, a new tub in, a deeper soaking tub, because that's what they wanted. But you'll see what we did with the window. We kept the window frame in, but we just took the bottom sash out. And you can, uh, we were able to salvage some siding so we could patch that. So if I go back, you'll see that's a, it's actually a double, okay. And then that uh, window is still there, but what we've done is put a frosted glass panel over it and sealed it. So you can still get light through it because it's frosted, it's still private, and it's up high enough, it's well above your shoulders. And yet uh, you don't have to worry then about putting something over that to protect it from water getting into the wall. And these are these panel systems I was talking about. This happens to be an acrylic panel. It looks like stone, but these acrylic panels now come, they're just that thin. And you've seen acrylic panels rather inexpensive, kind of cheap looking ones in many of the home centers. But a lot of these now come in many, many colors that look like granites. You can get them to look like a subway tile like this. This is a very inexpensive product that you could go right over, over top of existing tile with. This can glue right to it. And then once that's sealed on there, it's never gonna leak and you never have any issues of dealing with grout ever again because it's all sealed. 
So one option to consider. And then the vanity is, is uh, raised up and a new cultured marble top. Um, you, the original one was a cultured marble top. This is a more updated cultured marble top that looks more like a granite with an inset sink into it. And yet terribly, uh, not terribly expensive, quite inexpensive actually. And just another framed simple mirror with a wood frame around it. Excuse me. So yes. You, you covered the inside of the window, the bottom half of the window with a panel. Yep. And then you had additional siding that you used to cover. Yeah, we took we took the bottom sash out completely, filled in the wall, and patched the outside siding. So there's just that much sewing on the outside too. You could do that too. You could just leave the window as well. This is uh, in that same project. This is a shower that's in the basement, and I run into this quite often. This is an example of where. They've had uh, mud bed tile and then it's been that, they've done a, a really bad reglazing attempt on it. There's, there are some very good reglazing companies around and then there are some that it's like the spray on kind of stuff, it's, it doesn't work on very well and you can see it's pe peeling right off of here. And yet there is nothing really terribly wrong with the shower other than you might not like the choice of the tile that's in there or whatever, so, but this is just a cosmetic makeover and a way to go right over what's there. So instead of having to tear it out completely, this is an acrylic liner right over the shower base. It goes right over that, can we, and it's uh, sealed on there with glue, and that's never going to wear out. Uh, that'll be there 20 years from now. And then the walls of that shower are these same acrylic panels instead of this pattern, but it's a, just acrylic panel like this that's done in kind of a marbleized pattern that goes right over the existing tile and just cleans it right up and again no grout to deal with nice cleaned up and for a basement shower that worked out really well and you didn't have to spend a ton of money another option of that kind of system is these are lucite panels and again it's that idea of one panel on each wall with no grout goes right over everything this is an example of that lucite panel that you're seeing here it's that thin and it looks like glass but it's a lucite material so very easy to clean relatively inexpensive, not much more than the cost of the acrylic products. And again, it can go right over everything. And doesn't that look sharp? I think that looks like a really great glass shower and not a lot of money was spent. Okay? L-U-C-I-T-E. This is one of the smallest bathrooms I've ever done. This, this bathroom is five feet wide and six and a half feet long. I mean, you can almost turn around in here. And the problem with that is a lot of the stuff doesn't meet code because it's just too tight. So we had a challenge. We had to take this shower. You can see here, when you are remodeling, this toilet has to have 30 inches of space, 15 inches from the center line of a toilet each way to any obstruction. That's a code issue that you have to deal with. That's too tight. And then right next to it is the tub. So how can you get that to work without expanding the room? And then in addition to that, they had the same issue of the window over the shower. They had a nice creative look. They had a shower curtain on the back wall and a shower curtain on the front. So it works. Not terribly attractive, but it works. So the challenge was to take this bathroom. She was going on vacation for 12 days. And to get this all done within that period of time, excuse me, nine days, and we did this for $12,000. So that was the challenge, can we do it? It's almost like HGTV. <laughs> so this is what we did to it. So now we took, what we did with the window here was, we did uh, a frosted pane glass right over the window. Another way to do that is take the window out completely, and you can do an insulate, you can buy the insulated glass like in a brand new window, just the glass itself and, and um, uh, frame it in there. And then this is done with uh, glass tile because uh, that's a color element that she really liked. She had traveled in Europe a lot and really liked that detail. Instead of the shower door, this is what they call a bath screen. So it's a piece of glass that's fixed and it's stable, but it's open on the end. Very common in Europe. Us as Americans, I don't know why, but we're just so scared to get our that water might get out of our tub, but there's tile on the floor. Pardon? Cycle. Cycle? Okay. But you see what we did with the, uh, 
to solve the code issue here. This is an 18 inch wide pedestal sink. So that met the code issue. But then we added glass shelves above the, the uh, toilet so that you could gain some additional storage and then the medicine cabinet for additional storage there. So cleaned it right up, got it done in time. She came home and she loved it. And there's kind of a close up of it. And even though that's very tight, it still hopefully looks quite spacious for what a small room it is. How many inches did you say? Four. Uh, how the distance required? From a toilet, from the center of the toilet, 15 inches each way to any obstruction. So you gotta have 30 inches of space, okay? And there's, that's how tight that is. That's looking down on it. You see how small this room really was. This, uh, I'm bragging a little bit here because this one is the National Contractor of the Year Award. This is a tiny standard five by nine bathroom that most homes have, but you'll see how crowded it looks with everything that's lining up the way. And this is what we did to it. Now the idea here is by floating the vanity, you see how the room, how the floor space opens up and it's a very, it's not a difficult thing to do. Those are uh, stained glass panels just overlaid right over the window panels and where the white sections of the stained glass is, light comes through there, but yet it's still private, but it almost looks like a piece of art sitting on the wall. So on this, and then there was a tub in here that they never ever used. So then why keep the space? So we were able to turn it into a four foot shower and then put a tall vanity on our tall uh, linen cabinet on the end to give them additional storage. So it's about space planning and how you use space. And then on this side, this is what it was when you walked in before. You'll notice there's eight inches of space here that's basically wasted, isn't it? There's nothing going on there. So there's an opportunity to use that in a bathroom. So one way to do that is you just take two stock wall cabinets, cut the back off of them, make them eight inches deep and stack them on top of each other. And now you have a floor to ceiling uh, storage area done out of standard parts, okay? This um, bath is in St. Paul. Again, another standard five by nine bathroom. And it's, the challenge here is how do I make this more accessible? These folks are retired. They want to stay in this house forever but we want to make this as accessible for them where they're at now and what might happen to them in the future or not. So looking at what their needs are, here's some ideas. One idea is this idea of the floating pedestal sink with this solid surface shelf along there for storage. And then you'll notice over here, and I'm gonna show you a different picture. This is a toilet that's built into the wall, an in-wall toilet. So, which saves nine inches of floor space in front of it, which now makes getting through here very easy. So if they were ever to go into like a walker or into a wheelchair, they could still use this bathroom. Here's a shot straight on. This toilet is, inside this wall is a metal frame that holds the tank and everything's accessible from that flush button up on top. And this is a dual flush system. Everything's accessible right there. And you can also, because you're mounting this toilet bowl onto this metal framework, you can make it whatever height is comfortable to, for you. And this is a real important issue for some people. I had a 94 year old woman who was probably all of 130 pounds and she was six foot four. I mean, she was just a stick and she had uh, some real difficulties. But you can imagine her trying to sit down in a normal sized toilet, you, she would feel like she's falling. So with these kinds of toilets, I actually set the bowl at 22 inches off the floor and for her it was perfect. So if you were in a wheelchair, you could make a transfer more easily, depending on the height that's more comfortable to you. Different ways you can do that. Yes, sir? What are the issues now with raised toilet seats with regard to yeah, what is it? Yeah, what does it say to you? It's you know, it's you can easily change the seat. 
you know, when you go to sell, that's a simple solution. Just change the seat out. That's not a hard thing to do. I mean, while buying a higher, let's say you replace the toilet. Right. With one that has a higher seat. Right. If you replace the toilet, a good um, full height toilet, like a ADA height, you know, a good one will be 350 bucks. So it's easier to change that out and then get a, a or you, what we're doing a lot of now is what we call comfort height toilets. Your standard toilet is about 14 or 15 inches off the floor to the seat. Comfort height is 16 and a half, and your ADA or commercial um, uh, toilets are 18 inches high. So this is kind of in between that. For some people, if you're a little shorter, have uh, shorter legs, if you feel like the, the ADA toilets are too high, the comfort height is a really nice, uh, good option for that. It feels much more comfortable. How much is that? Like? This toilet? Uh, this is about 1500 bucks with everything done. But it's, uh, one thing about it is it's really quiet because the tank is in the wall. It's really easy to clean because you notice that the bowl doesn't go down to the floor. The flo it's a floating bowl, so it's really easy to clean under these. And you'll, everybody asks me, well, how much weight can that support? You're, you're, you look at it and you think, oh my gosh, that's going to break. But these are rated for 880 pounds. So if you can put 880 pounds on there, good luck. So. But I like the, the pedestal there with that towel ring in the front. The being able to get up to that and really get tight to it, that makes it really easy to work at that. So, and doesn't this room feel bigger? Yeah. And this is the tub shower on the other side of that room. Here again, we've put grab bars in there to hold on to as you enter and exit. Another one on the left to help steady yourself if you need it. What's the pattern inside the uh, tub? Pardon? What's inside the tub? What's inside the tub? It's an acrylic tub. Oh, this is an armrest. There's armrests molded into the tub, so you can sit down and you can push up out of there. And these panels that are on the wall here are solid surface material. And that's what this whole line is right here. It's these same panel systems I was talking about earlier. This is made out of uh, uh, polyester and acrylic. They're that thin. And again, these can go right up on the wall and they're all one piece. You see there's no grout to deal with and they come in all these colors to choose from. And that's what happens when you remodel in another 20 years or 20 pounds, you gotta take the whole sheet rack out with it No, no, it should pull off. But if you did sheet rock is cheap, that's the easy part, so. Okay. Um, this was a, uh, Tiny, again, five by nine bathroom, but it, it feels much smaller because you'll see when you walk in how the shower door just blocks your eye and cuts the room right in half. So just by opening this up, it's got the window in it again. So, and then on the other side, it had the original beadboard paneling from when the house was built, which was a character of the house, and we really wanted to keep that, but let's clean it all up and then put a new vanity in there. So this is one way to do this, and this is how you can mix materials. So for example, here in the shower, in the center, that's, that's real tile, it's that rock, the tile rocks, and then all the panels on the walls, on the rest of the walls are the acrylic panels. So you can mix and match these kinds of things too and create interesting looks if you like. Uh, what kind of floor, she asked, let's see. Oh, that's the uh, marmoleum floor again. You'll, it's just a very subtle pattern. The nice thing about the marmoleum too is it stays at room temperature so it doesn't feel cold to the, like if you're walking on tile where it gets cold, it feels warmer underfoot. But this is that area where we put this acrylic around the window with a frosted panel to give you privacy and let light in. This is an acrylic panel on the right and this is the tile inset in the center. So you can be creative in how you do these things and yet you're still not spending a lot of money. None of these windows then work in panel. Correct. But almost all of these bathrooms now have modern ventilation fans in them. So that was the reason why windows were put in bathrooms in the first place. That was your ventilation fan. Well, now we have vent fans in there to get the moisture and humidity out of there. So uh, it doesn't really, it's not really needed to have the window in there. And then this is the vanity on the other side with this idea of, this what they call a banjo top where the top is extended right over the toilet to give you some additional counter space in the room and adding a common 
thing we find when we walk into small bathrooms like this is that space above the toilet is usually bare or very little air, maybe just a towel bar. By adding a small cabinet there, you can increase the storage of the room with just a standard uh, vanity cabinet. I had a question. Yes, sir. That's uh, got dark colored uh, faucets yep. and knobs and so forth. Yep. Uh, is that still rising or is it starting to decline? Well, the oil rub bronze, is it's, it's a pretty classic finish and it will probably always be around to some extent. You're seeing that and black, matte black finishes still coming back very strong. The one knock against oil rub bronze, especially in bathroom fixtures, is it's a little softer, so it can be scratched a little more easily. If you want something you really want to be able to scrub or something, uh, chrome or brushed nickel might be a little better choice. But here, this is a period to the house because there was a lot of those kinds of features. And that, remember that wood beadboard that was, was original there? We'd, it's all cleaned up and just painted. So you can still maintain the character of it just by changing it like that. Another five by nine bath. And again, this idea of how the shower door and the tub just kind of stops your eye and cuts the room off. So how do we make it look bigger? These, again, losing the larger panel or the larger tile on the floor, you see that bigger size tile, how much bigger the room looks on the floor itself. And by using clear glass and the frameless shower doors like that, now your eye extends all the way to the back wall. This one we did, I think it's probably now 12 or 13 years ago. Here's your 1950s pink tile on the floor. And the tile, everything in this bathroom is still here except the vanity and the light. We're gonna go right over everything in this particular bath. So this is one way to do it. That floor was, again, one of the mud bed set tiles, so it's a perfect, if it's in good shape and not damaged at all by water, it's actually a, a very good sub-firm base for just going new tile right over it. So this is large format tile that's laid right over the top. These are pieces of granite uh, and tiles that are cut very, very thin. These are examples of them up here. These are real granite panels. They're cut that thin. They have an aluminum backer on the back and, and the real stone on the front. They come in many different colors and patterns. But the beauty of this product is this aluminum backer gives it great stability. So when it's glued on the wall, it's, it's not coming off and it's there for the life of the house. And you can go right over existing tile with this again. And that's what we did here. This is a granite pattern with a tile inlay and we went right over the white tile and kept the, the tub and went right over that, right around it. And this is another uh, bathroom where you have the big old radiator in there and we wanted to take this out and do a shower and we wanted to do it with kits. And on the market today, especially uh, from uh, places like Malaysia and places like that, you can buy very inexpensive bathroom kits to remodel your bathroom with. And this is the other side of that room before we started. And then here's the after. And this is a kit. The vanity, the sink, the faucet, the mirror, and the toilet topper all come as a kit. That was done in a, a dark, rich wood in a walnut. And I, when I, I think when we did this, that whole kit was like 1,700 bucks. Really pretty inexpensive. And if you like a contemporary look, it's a good line. Where do they sell them? Pardon? Who sells them? This is, you can buy these online. You just do a search online, sure. And this is the other side of that room. And that shower system is the granite that we just looked at in that last bathroom. These are kits as well. These are granite panels and the shower base. It's all a kit. And then we took the window out. And this is an example where we did the uh, frosted glass panels, but it's a double pane window sealed with the argon gas in it, so it's very insulating and it lets the light through, but it gives you total privacy. Busy, busy tile, lots of grout to deal with. But the thing is, they've never used the, to the tub anymore, so the idea here is they wanted to create the shower, and they also want to create what they call a low-profile shower. And that's an example of these kinds of products so instead of your standard shower base, which is usually five or six inches tall to step over, these are products now that are made with just that kind of a lip. That's all you gotta step over to get into it. 
And if you were ever to uh, need assistance to get in there with any kind of a walker or wheelchair, they make a little ramp that will go right up and you can roll right into this thing. And it's all one solid piece and it's really heavy duty. It's not gonna, it's not gonna break down and it's very easy to clean, but yet there's a slight pebbling on the bottom of it so that it's very simple. This is called Onyx, O-N-Y-X. Stone Onyx or what they're called? It's like the Stone Onyx, but it's a man-made product. What's the device, what's the device name? Pardon? What's the panel name? This panel? This, one. this is an Onyx panel, this is an Onyx shower base. Shower base. Okay? Yes, ma'am. When you um, think of it, you have a bathroom in half, yeah. you take out the bathtub and put the shower, is that pretty good to do that, or do people have bathrooms? That's always the argument. You know, if you talk to all the real, real estate people, they say you have to have one bathroom in the house. But yet, survey after survey after survey of uh, people that are buying homes in the remodeling industry, we're taking out more bathtubs than we're putting in. If we're putting in tubs, they're usually separate. You have a separate shower and a separate tub if you have the space to do that. Uh, it's just that this is the way we live now. We take more showers than we do baths. It's not, there's no rule to it. It's really what works best for you. That's always the argument, but you take some of these large bathrooms and you lay them in there and hose them down with a handheld. Same idea. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, <laughs> we can figure something out, I'm sure. This, uh, this bathroom, again, is a five by nine bathroom, and he called it his amazing multi-purpose bathroom. You'll see how tight that toilet is to the, this is the tub. And there's about 10 inches of space in front of that toilet. He said he could sit down on the toilet and wash his feet in its tub, and he could multi-purpose all day long and be really efficient about getting ready in the morning. And again, you walk in and that vanity just blocks your eye, doesn't it? And that's just the way this happened to be laid out. So they asked us, they said, look, what can we do to rearrange this or not? Or what can we do to make this more efficient, better for us? And also make it code compliant because that toilet does not need code being that tight to the tub. So here's an idea. Oh, this is the other side. There's some pretty creative repair work on the tub there. And this was the, this is a size seven shoe in front of the tub, in front of the toilet. So that's what we did to it. And sometimes these kinds of projects are really about space planning. How can you take that particular space and is there a better way to lay things out? Given that we needed a tub, given that we needed a vanity, and given that we needed a toilet, how do we rearrange that space? So by taking the tub and turning it onto the end wall, it solved two problems for us. It allowed us to make the toilet spacing code compliant. And by moving the, the uh, vanity uh, sink to the other side of the wall, it allowed us to get all this storage in there. And there's that shot. And you can be creative with the materials too. Take a look at the mirror. It's just plain, simple, flat mirror. But it doesn't mean it has to be square. You can cut mirror any way you want to. So we just cut it like a half moon and wrapped it around the cabinet. You can be creative with those kinds of simple materials. And then there's a lot of these done, especially in the 80s, uh, and a lot of them in Bloomington here, because we worked a lot in Bloomington. And these are trip and fall hazards waiting to happen, slip and fall accidents with these steps. So instead, we took it out and we did a true roll-in shower. So this idea where the, the shower is totally a walk-in like that, you can, if you have enough space, you can utilize that. I know that you don't go for walk-in tubs. Do you have something No, we can do them. I just don't have them in the photographs. So. They don't leave, they kind of Depends on which one you buy. There's some, like any products, there's usually really good ones on the market, and there's some that are done really cheaply that do leak. Uh, so the, the thing there is get, make sure you get the guarantee that they won't leak. So we, there's good ones on the market that won't leak, and they perform very well. But it is a little bit more of a fixed use. So we put them in. Well, yeah, you can use it that way, but then 
it, it's not as, it's universally friendly for a lot of people, but most people aren't used to working with them yet. So they're a little bit afraid of them is what I find. They look at them and go, you, you gotta show them how to use them the first time, so. I, we talk a lot about in bathrooms, especially about lighting. And one of the things about lighting in a bathroom, it's always best to try to get the lighting straight on your face. So the idea of doing sconce lights here, instead of having lights coming up over your head and shadowing down your face, having the light straight on your face is usually much better. So just an idea here, and you have two sinks and you can create his and her areas and with separate areas like that instead of one big light fixture over the top. This is kind of a bad photograph. I've married two photographs here together. But the idea is that there was the medicine cabinet above and then this sit-up area below. And how can you mask that? If you don't want it to show that much, here's one idea. You can take things like this is a shoji screen that then just folds back and then you can see the lights in the mirror and get at everything. But if you want to put it away and make it look more like an art piece, you can do this. This, this pedestal sink Looks very, very custom, doesn't it? This is actually standard off the stocks, uh, off the shelf stuff from a company out of California. So, and it makes it easier to get at it. But the reason why we were doing this is in, as you walk through the doorway into the, there's a tub over here, toilet and a bidet. And if you have a separate uh, toilet and a bidet, it takes five feet of space to put those in there. So it wasn't, that was space that we really didn't have. We wanted to be able to open up this doorway to make it easier for the clients to get through that door. So by combining the toilet and the bidet, that allowed us to open up this wall and make that opening much bigger and make the room feel bigger. So here's an example. There's a lot of them on the market. This happens to be one from a company where when you, uh, um, sit down, you open up the seat, you sit down on there, the weight of your body sitting on the seat releases a, a blast of nice warm air. So, and then you do your business, and you can do either a regular toilet or bidet or both, cause of, and then when you hit the button and the bidet retracts and cleans itself, and as you're getting up out of there, it shoots warm air over here and dries you off. And it'll, you know, it'll put a smile on your face and send you on your way very happy every morning. Now these aren't cheap. At the time I put this in, which is quite a while ago now, it was $4,000. But if you've seen anything in the trades, Kohler has them out there. They're like 6,000 bucks for that Kohler Nexus. Or Toto has these. But you can also do these relatively inexpensively. Toto and other companies like that have what they call a washlet, which is just the toilet seat portion that is the bidet. And you can retrofit a standard toilet with that. So if you really want those features, you can get them now. And you can pamper yourself to death. <laughs> and then that allowed us to open up a closet on the other side and do a roll-in shower for them. So we're just trying to make it more accessible for them. And this had been a sleeping porch on the second floor. And uh, the idea of turning that into the master bath was very appealing, but also the idea of doing the transom windows on there to maintain that feeling that it's still the porch. So it's just, again, a matter of how do you put things together. And these are called, another way to make space look bigger, you'll see that this vanity, again, is only 12 inches deep, but the sinks are what they call semi-encast. So they hang out over the front of the, and that allows you a lot more floor space. You can get right up to the sink and makes the room feel much, much bigger. And then quite often we walk into houses that have what they call Jack and Jill bathrooms, the same bathroom back to back, same style, same look. This client had one of these Jack and Jill bathrooms and we worked with them on the design. They loved the design and she was gonna use one, he was going to use the other one. But what they couldn't agree on was what the finishes were. What she liked, he didn't. Fancy that. Can you imagine? So here's an idea of what you can take in the same design, but by just doing different materials, how it looks totally different. So here's one. So that's the one design. And then this is the other one. And see how the room character changes just by how you do the finishes. So. Okay. 
And this is, this is a very common request we just talked about a little bit earlier. Take the tub out, create the, the, the really great shower because we just never use the tub. And get rid of the busy tile on the floor. And now by using large format tile, carrying it through, the room feels bigger. And then a nice little trick is just using this glass tile as the backsplash and letting it just run right into the shower like that. Helps to tie those areas together. The question is, it, when you're doing like this tile over the existing floor, you're going to have a, a height change at the doorway, of course. And you can ramp that many different ways. If you're doing tile, many of the tiles now come with a bullnose tile. It's like a finished tile. And you can use it to ramp it down. And you can extend it through the door further if you can step back a little bit. There's different ways to do it. But yeah, it's, those are the compromises you have to make. Yep. This is, I'm going to show you this as an example of green remodeling. This is the existing vanity. We're going to keep it. We're going to go right over pretty much everything here. We're going to change the vanity top. So that's an, exa that's an example of refacing a cabinet done with a product called, um, it's a sorghum wood product. Uh, and it's a, a wood panel made out of sorghum. And it just has a really interesting texture to it. So, and then the countertop is recycled paper, but it actually stands up to the water. And the panels in the shower are these stone panels that go right over the existing tile. So all we did was change the light in the sink. This is now getting to a little larger remodel, and this is a much bigger bathroom. So you have a, a lots of really loud wallpaper. Now you see how the wallpaper just brings the room in. And this client, on the other side, this is the shower. So it's a separate tub and shower idea. This client fell in love with a piece of granite that they had seen. They said, look, use this wherever you can. And this is the vanity on the other side, pretty basic and kind of sterile. So we want this to feel really warm and inviting, and we love this really rich colored vanity, uh, granite that we found. So how can we keep the basic layout but just update it all? So here's one idea. That's the granite that they found that they really liked. And then the cabinets are done in a, a bird's eye maple material. And you could do this in any wood. And, uh, and then the granite was taken and wrapped over the tub. And you'll see the reflection in the mirror there that we did the shower out of the granite as well. And there's an example of the shower. And what they do is they take granite slabs and they mill them down to 3 quarters of an inch thick and then lay them right up that way. So the other thing is we did extend the tub deck into there to create now a bench where you could sit down and put a handheld shower in there for you. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I'm an interior designer by training, but also a kitchen and bathroom modeler. And uh, if you know Jim Brandenburg, the wildlife photographer, he has a place up in Ely called Ravenwood. And what it was is a log cabin is what it was. And he started out and he built this entire complex right around this log cabin. And this is the guest bath in that space. Now, when he did the log cabin and the, and the add-on space, all the floors throughout were this black slate. And he said, you know, I have a bunch of this, and I really want to use it up. But he says, I have a very different aesthetic for this. He said, I want this to look like it has Japanese and Norwegian influences to it. And I'm sorry, I missed design school that day because I didn't. I'm going, what? Let's, where, where are we going to go with this? But actually, by using the black slate as the, as the basis for it, it grounds it. And then um, the shower is done in vertical strips of teak. And the countertop, the vanity top, is actually a blackboard that was salvaged from a school out of Duluth. And so as you, the other interesting thing, you'll notice that the toilet is recessed into the wall. Well, there outside of this wall is a stairway going up to the second floor. He also said, oh, by the way, when, that go when that's going up to the second floor, we're going to put a, a window in there to make it look like an outhouse. And so <laughs> he's a very creative guy. So right up there, it's a little hard to see, but there are glass panes up in there that are wire glass and frosted to let light in like it's an outhouse coming in there. So whatever, that's what we came up with. But it was a pretty interesting look. This is a small. Two small little bathrooms and a hallway. You see a lot of this in, little, in 80s homes where there's a lot of little rooms with a lot of wasted space. So the idea of taking two small bathrooms in this hallway and, and creating one master suite out of them. And this next picture is, 
There's the two stepper up into the tub. It's a slip and fall waiting to happen. So by combining these rooms, now I can create a really large master bathroom with two sinks and separate shower, separate tub area, and there's a walk-in closet off there now too. So for them, it allows them to stay in the house, but it's also much more usable for them. Another 80s home, this is actually in West Bloomington, not too far from here. Uh, this is a long, narrow room, and a, again, a bit of wasted space. And they said, you know, we have this beautiful window, but it's, we have a towel hanging over it most of the time for privacy, and we have this shower that doesn't work very well. So here again, we just reorganize the space to take the best advantages of the architecture of the home. Now, they wanted a separate tub, so by creating the tub under the window, and the window has a privacy blind on it if, you, if, if and when you want to use that, but by reorganizing it, that back corner now has a barn door piece of glass. This is actually a shower door laid on a track that retracts and the toilet's tucked around the corner, so now it's private whereas before it was right out in the open. And then on this side now, we we're able to take and, and create two vanities with a sit-down makeup area for her. And then on the other end of this room is the shower area. And that's done out of these marble panels. This is silver vein cut marble, and that's what that shower is made out of. And it's absolutely gorgeous. And again, it's real stone, so very, easy care and it's going to last the life of the house. Yes, sir? Um, where are those back stone pieces available? Can you find them at a, a house? Or the, or the, the we're a dealer for them. I don't, I don't think there are many around, but we do a ton of this kind of work because it's such a beautiful look, but also it's really, it solves the issue of grout and the maintenance and that kind of thing. This is, uh, these are called thin stone panels. So, and there's a bunch of colors up here. In fact, I did a, uh, we use them all over the house. This is a piece of real onyx done with those panels set up. And if you see the light, you'll see that it's translucent. So you can backlight these and create really interesting effects too. And yet, the th interesting thing about these products is you pay a little bit more for the stone, but the labor's very inexpensive. It only takes us about two hours to put a panel in versus the cost of tile. So when we compare it to what it costs to put in tile versus this, they aren't that much different. When you cut those panels, is it one solid panel? Or? One solid panel. Each wall is one piece. And let's say if the shower was leaking before you put those panels in, would it waterproof after that? Uh, no, because these are totally waterproof. This backer on here makes these totally waterproof. So I can go right over anything and seal it. And then this is the other side of that room with the vanity set up. And it's just using different materials. You'll see the little makeup counter. That's actually recycled glass. And there's a company right here in town that does that. And you can create your own countertop. You can pick the color of your glass. You can pick the size of the particulates. You can pick the mix of it and the background color. So you can write your name and your countertop if you want to out of glass. So it's pretty creative stuff. And that's a close-up of that glass. And then we used the blue glass and the knobs to pull the blue glass out of there. Those are vodka bottles, actually, in that glass. And then this uh, client actually was from Belgium, and they, they uh, originally, and they moved over here to the States. So they had a very European aesthetic about things. And there, you tile all the way up to the ceiling. So you can see the tile and the walls going right up to the ceiling. This shower is pretty unique. It's a corian on the base, corian on the ceiling. The walls are done out of sile stone, which is a quartz product. And then those two shower heads up on top, when those are on, they spin. It's kind of crazy stuff. So you can get, yeah, and then there's a steam, sh and then down here, these are steam shower uh, spigots. And then there's another sh one of those in-wall toilets. And here, glass tile is inset into black slate tile to make it look like a rug in the floor. And then this is the vanity on the other side, and it's floating. And those cabinets are just done out of uh, aluminum panel, aluminum door panels, which are readily available now and not terribly expensive either. So a different look. And then this was a more, one of the more interesting challenges I've had. 
This guy bought this place on the St. Croix River. He's looking over the river, absolutely beautiful. It's a very, very contemporary house. And he says, you know, I bought this house on the St. Croix and I really want this to look like a Northwoods Lodge. So I'm going, we're going to take this contemporary house and make it look like a Northwoods Lodge. Okay, how are we going to do that? Well, here's one way. So, now those cabinets are all standard stuff. There's a company out of Wisconsin that builds those. There's not custom at all. The, tile, the pebble tile is inset into a, a regular field tile, and that path leads you out to a back deck where there's a hot tub, so it's like walking through the forest. <laughs> and then this is complete with deer prints on the glass. And we created a steam, uh, a sauna, and a regular shower in there. Thank you very much, and I'm happy to answer any questions. There's these samples up here if you're interested in looking. I have portfolios of some of these projects we've looked at with before and after photos, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Thank you very much.